Tala Saman joins us today. She's a fashionista, a fashion blogger. You created My Fashion Diary, and it's an amazing blog. We're really happy that you can make the time to join us today, Tala. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're a so-called social influencer. <laughs> you like the term, first of all, and then I want to know how you influence. So I don't really like the term, I think, because it's just used so loosely here, especially in our region. I think everyone calls themselves social media influencers, and I think I think no one should call themselves that. I feel like people, people should identify who influences rather than them personally. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been doing this for nine years now. I've been running the site for nine years. Uh, Instagram has, and, and all the social media channels have just been things that, you know, I've kind of dabbled when they started. Um, naturally, because I'm in the social media world, I always kind of dabble with new things that, that launch and you, you kind of see what works in the region, what works for you and, yeah. How much of your time does My Fash Diary actually take up? Honestly, whenever anyone asks me that, I can never identify just because of the fact that, you know, it doesn't feel like a job to me. It's, uh, I, I... Is it a job for you? I mean, it, it pretty much is and, and um, I guess with me, I just kind of need to constantly be inspired because if I'm not inspired, then I'm not going to be able to share stuff that are, you know, interesting to people and things that people are going to get excited about because for me, every everything that I've published are things that I'm that I'm always excited by or things that I've been curious about and kind of want to want to kind of investigate or dabble through and, and share with my readers. Why are you here at STEM? How does it help your social media appearance? And may I add that she has one not 112,000 Instagram followers? Yeah. I mean, that's quite a number. <laughs> uh, I'm here actually, I was speaking on the Snapchat versus Instagram talk at the DMS stage, but um, to be honest, I should have spent like a few days kind of going around. I'm literally in and out. I've started DJing the past few years, and um, so I'm DJing for a fitness class, so I'm literally from here running off to, the, to white. So what is your preferred medium? Is it Snapchat or Instagram? Uh, Instagram, and I think that's that's probably been... I, I like to say Snapchat has grown quite a bit, but um, you know the site has always been my base. That's always what I kind of push readers back to, and that's been you know my baby, and that's how what I how I kind of started generally in the whole social media world. But Instagram is is something that I've always been very consistent with, and I guess it's a lot more created. Brands always want to work with. Recently, they've been work, wanting to work on Instagram together rather than than the other platforms. I want to talk to you about how you cooperate with brands. How does it work? Do they approach you now that you have so many followers? Or what is the collaboration like? Luckily, it's always been brands. I've never kind of, and maybe that will change in a couple of years uh, when it becomes a more saturated market, oversaturated market. But um, luckily, it's always brands that kind of come to us and, and kind of say, you know what, this, sometimes they'll kind of say, this is what we want to promote. How can we work together? And then I usually like those because I feel like, you know, I know what works for me. I know what, what kind of excites my readers. I know what kind of gets some, gets some clicking. So uh, we have those kind of brands and then we have brands that are like, you know what, this is how much we're paying, that's our budget, this is what we want, this is what you're gonna do. Um, and usually a lot of the time those are what kind of ru ruins a lot of, a lot of those influencers or bloggers or people on social media because they're always very commercial and um, you know these days people are, are a lot more savvy like I, I have friends that the aren't in things more they're don't not, they? they're, yeah and they're yeah. not within within the industry but they know they know what's paid for what's advertised people sometimes think more things are advertised than others you know what I mean like sometimes it really is something that I'm swearing about but people will think it's there because the brand paid me to say it's good. So what's your ratio then between paid content or where a brand comes in and, and, and pushes it? And uh, you I, picking a product, be it either a travel destination or um, a new mascara brand, and it's really real because you want to talk like about Like 99% of what I okay. write about is, uh, is all Completely. things that I recommend. Even when I do work with brands, I still need to make sure that it would naturally be something I talk about. You know, it, it would make no sense for me you know, and I, I when when I see all those people kind of ruining their kind of integrity with with all those projects, I get it. Like I, you know, I get it. If a brand comes to you with such a high, like hefty fee and says we're gonna pay you this, just post ten times about their product, you know, not many people think, you know, what in the long run I do want to do this, and and I can ruin my integrity and the trust that I built with my readers, and 
Um, I stay away from that, and it, you know, it's that temptation that. But then you kind of have to, you know, look back and say, you know, what, how, what, what do I want out of this? And you, and at the end of the day, you have to pay the bills. Yeah, right? yeah. So, so I, it, so it, I guess that's the little struggle that I that I have, because um, a lot of the time brands brands want what they want, and they're not really open to. But d does my fast diary pay the bills then? Um, I mean, luckily I live with my parents. Oh, good. <laughs> I live with my Thank parents. Thank you, mom and dad. <laughs> and um, honestly, you know what? It it does its job. I I do I do other things on the side as well. Um, and uh, yeah. Cool, and you get to see the world a lot. Yeah. I saw you were in, on the Philippines. And yeah, so I was there on a, for a business seminar. I do travel quite a bit. Um, Honestly, good. my parents were the ones that kind of pushed me to leave my full-time job and, and try, try running my site full-time. And um, You know, I hear these stories a lot, especially today uh, during the STEP conference. Yeah. And it's always the fathers who say, listen, girl, you go for it. Yeah, my dad. I see an opportunity here. Why don't you take it? And, and I love those stories. Yeah, especially from an Arab family because you don't see much of that with Arabs. A lot of them are, you need to be, a, I mean, it took, I know when I wanted to go to fashion school initially, it was like, no, you need to do business, you need to do something else. Um, I Luckily, they've, you know, they've seen, they've seen how I, I do work hard. People sometimes don't realize how much work goes behind all this. Um, and, you know, it is an oversaturated market, so if you sit back and expect things to just come to you, they don't. And um, especially doing it for nine years, I know a lot of the bloggers that I started with are doing other things now because it's, uh, you need to constantly stay relevant and, and, you know, still produce things that are, that are still interesting to people. How have your parents inspired you then? Tell me more about that. Um, my parents have been great with, especially my dad, just he's a very entrepreneurial and he's, you know, he's kind of like, do it, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And um, it's been the best, uh, best thing I've done because if I obviously didn't leave my full-time job, I probably wouldn't have been able to take the opportunities that I've, that I've been able to take. And um, I feel very lucky that I get to, you know, just things that I probably would have never, you know, going to the Victoria's Secret show and getting work to work with brands that, that I love and, you know, now DJing at places that I, that I, that I love. And, you know what, like, so I, yeah, I guess the fact that my parents have pushed me, I, you know, it's when I speak to other girls and I tell them, my, you know, to try it full time. A lot of people can't because if you're paying your rent and you're paying all sure. that, like, it's, it's not a, it's not you have to make decision. ends meet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So would you, what's your advice to young girls who are looking for their place in the world? Would you say setting up a fashion blog and, and, and trying to make it big is, is an actual career? No, you know what, I always, I meet a lot of young girls, especially young girls, sometimes a little older and I'm like, I don't know how you have that mindset, but whenever anyone tells me that I just want to be just like you, I'm like, that's the stupidest thing you'd ever want. Because be unique, be because, an individual. And it's not just that, but I obviously, I think if I if my mindset was I want to be a blogger and like my I want this much following and I want to I would have never gotten to where I was like I you know I luck is a big part of it but I also that I everything just grew organically I didn't just wake up when I've been doing it for nine years so I I have readers that are loyal but they're loyal because I've you know I built that trust over a large span of time and along the way I was studying I was working and. You know, it wasn't until I felt like it was the right time to take that leap that I finally did a couple of years ago. And um, But it certainly helped that you were one of the first fashion yeah, bloggers you know in the what, Middle like, East, yeah, right? I, you know, a lot of the time people be like, what are your tips? I am lucky. I did. I am hardworking and I do, I do work really hard with content and um, I don't expect it to just come to me. I, uh, but I also think I was lucky that I did start early on because starting now, as you said, the market's saturated. And, and yeah. starting now very organically is very hard to starting then very organically. I was doing, you know, I was doing projects with brands where I got nothing in return. Like, no gifts, no nothing. Like, it wasn't, got literally nothing in return. That excited me, just the fact that I got to, you know, work with Procter & Gamble when I was 18 years old and, and do some cool projects. Whereas now, not many people can, you know, not many people would do that or with Procter & Gamble do that with a small a small girl just up and coming little blog <laughs> so how has social media changed over the years um I, you were a pioneer i mean 
it's a ve it's very oversaturated. I feel like there's, I mean, I'm sure there's just too much. I, there's it? just too much. Like I think there's so many platforms, there's so many posts, there's so many this. And I think I used to post a lot more, whether it's on the site, whether it's on that. Whereas now, I think I'm a lot more created with what I kind of release. And um, before, I just post anything. You know, Instagram, I post like I could post several, like six times a day. I post four times a day on the blog. Now I don't do that. I'm posting two, three times a week, a week on the site, two times a day maximum on on Instagram. And and then rather and it's like quality already, and not quantity. Yeah. Yeah. But that to me is still is still quite you know quite regular, quite consistent. Mad is about making a difference. How do you make a difference? To the uh, world, to your parents, to fashion interested people? Honestly, I feel like I've, and I hate, I hate talking about myself, but I feel like I love when I meet, one of the most rewarding things about what I do is the fact that I meet young girls and it doesn't even have to be about starting a blog, but it's really going after what they love. and. Um, I I come from a from a Middle Eastern family. I am originally Middle Eastern, and I I know that going to fashion school wasn't the easiest thing for me. You know, to kind of convince my parents that that's what I want to study for four years and um, and do my own thing. And um, I don't know. So I, I I love that. I love meeting young girls that said that you know that inspired them. And and I nice. yeah. Before I let you go, your best beauty tip ever given, or one that you apply me? Uh, well, I've never slept ever with makeup on, but I guess that's like a very common, uh, it's common sense, no? <laughs> My best one is drink apple cider vinegar. My grandma has been doing oh, that. Really? She's 95 years old and she looks amazing. I For 60 do. years she's been that's drinking, amazing. but you, it has to be organic and it has to be the cloudy one. It's got all the minerals and all. So that with a little bit of water, so apple cider, water, yeah. and that's a, it's quite a sour drink. It's I do the ginger lemon shots in the morning. I don't know if that helps, I, I kind of take it for immunity reasons, but I'm sure it has like, I don't know what it has in it, that it's uh, those little okay, shots. Okay, either okay. ginger or apple cider vinegar, <laughs> it'll make you beautiful. Thank you so much, Tala. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us so on Mad Talks. Thank you.